So one more. Yes. Okay. Very good evening to all the dear students and high dignitaries. Today is the momentous occasion as we gather here for the special virtual onboarding session. I, Dr. Subita, on behalf of lovely professional university, extends my heartiest congratulations to all the dear students who are present here and their proud parents. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you all for this esteemed webinar with Dr. Laviraj Gupta, sir, Pro Vice Chancellor at lovely professional university. Dr. Laviraj Gupta sir has set a benchmark for multi hyphen achievements. He holds a PhD in bioinformatics. Sir has authored seven books on IoT, mobile robotic platforms, biomedical science sensors, machine learning, and data analytics. Sir has 230 patents on his name. He is currently holding a section leader position at Stanford University, code in place. Sir has collaborated in research project for precision farming for water conservation using satellite imaginary with Stanford University, USA. I know that you all must be eagerly waiting to hear from Sir. So without further delay, let us await a word of wisdom from our esteemed Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. Laviraj Gupta, sir. Sir, over to uh, you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shobita. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, students. Good evening, uh, parents and my colleagues. See, today is a very important day in your life. First of all, at an onset, let me congratulate you. Let me applaud the decision of your parents to choose LPU as your academic partners. Because now you are embarking on a new journey in life. I call certain milestones are there in one's life. The very first milestone is that once you start speaking and reading, that becomes the first milestone in acquiring the knowledge. The second milestone in your life is when you begin your schooling. The third milestone is where you are standing today. The milestone where you embrace, where you begin, where you embark on your journey towards your higher education. See, there are Interim milestones in between, when, when I talk about earlier education milestones, there'll be kindergarten, there'll be a primary, there'll be secondary, senior secondary, and now you're into a tertiary education mode. See, these days and these times, the upcoming times are very critical in your life. It's very well said by by a philosopher, that you toil during these years and enjoy through your life, or you enjoy these small little bits of years and then toil throughout your life. Why I'm saying that I must congratulate and applaud the decision of joining LPU, because we at LPU are very particular about our ideology. The ideology is very plain, simple, and clear. The ideology says that a student joining any higher education institute or any university is not just simply there for the output. You need to understand the difference between these two words, the output and the outcome. The output is something which is inevitable which is incidental, which is something which you are finally going to get of the work, hard work, or no work which you do. But the outcome is like icing on the cake. I mean to state 
that none of you are joining LPU just for the output because we call degree as an output. You all are here for the outcome. And for us, we have clearly demanded and have created the, the entire scope, span, and spectrum for you that you attain the outcome, not just simply the output. Anywhere you go and join for the higher education, any institute, any university, you will finally get the output, and that is the degree. Here, we together, you and us, will together strive, strive to get you the outcome. And for us, the outcome is your career. Be it in terms of placements, be it in terms of, uh, you know, entrepreneurial journey you intend to uh, rise upon to, be it in form of uh, higher studies or study abroad or corporate jobs or government jobs, we are very clear that each and every student joining LPU is yearning for the outcome. And the outcome for us is the career. We all are geared up. We have completely laid down very crisp, structured, monitorable, measurable means and mechanisms so that we can gauge your progression from the very first day that you attain the outcome, you attain the dream career of your life. I can talk about it for ages and ages together that what kind of mechanism. In the very first semester only, you will experience something which is the buzzword around the globe, and that is gamification. You will encounter or you will experience a course in which you will be earning coins by game elements. Creating small little videos of yours. I know that you are, you are very fond of creating your videos. So we have created a game element in which you'll create a video in the very first two weeks or three weeks that who am I? Dear students, I think uh, because of some technical issue, uh, sir got disconnected. Uh, please stay tuned. Uh, we are we are resolving the problem in few few minutes or few seconds. Yes, Give sir. Me. Resolving within few minutes. Oh, 
No, see, uh, first of all, apologies, I got disconnected. But then, do you think that I am going to take this disconnection as a challenge? This is what we instill in each Vuelto. Vuelto is a student of LPU. Vuelto is a transformer. Many of you might think that this disconnection of mine is a challenge. But we will instill that this challenge is an opportunity for you. If you are into computer science, if you are into electronics, then this is an opportunity that even in today's world where I am connected to a 5 GBPS network, my connectivity is still challengeable, still interruptible. Now, this is an opportunity. This is where you can, you can become an entrepreneur so that once the meeting is started, the entire, entire resources, be it hardware-oriented resources, be it software-oriented resources, make it sure that the connectivity happens. There is a redundant system. Now, this is one of the best examples of our philosophy, that we consider each and every challenge to be a grand, grand opportunity. If there is a challenge in your, your communication, you consider that there is a challenge that you are shy in communication, we'll give you loads and loads of opportunity. In class itself, that you'll be given a topic aforehand, and you are actually going to speak about that topic. So we are converting a challenge into an opportunity. These are the kind of frameworks which we have created. You're going to enjoy each and every bit of your, of your studies, of your curricular, extracurricular, co-curricular activities at LP. Because everything is very well structured for you. Coming to the technology, in today's world, nothing belongs to a specific discipline. Nothing. I will, I will show you my mobile phone. You all use this mobile phone. Do you think that it just simply belongs to electronics? No, it doesn't. Do you think that it just simply hovers on computer science? No, it doesn't. It has amalgamation of all the disciplines of science put together, be it physics, be it maths, be it even chemistry, be it even computer science, electronics, electrical, mechanical, civil, and so on and so forth. So my advice, my tip, my request to all of you is that you have taken admission in a specific discipline of your choice. But in LPU, because we offer 150 programs together. Go and explore other disciplines also. If you are into mechanical engineering, why can't you explore fashion designing? Because there can be there can be a lot of structural analysis you can do for even clothes. If you are into civil engineering, why can't you explore agriculture? This is the kind of opportunity which you are, which we are going to craft for you. That you are picking cornerstones of various variety so that you are, beca you are becoming more career-oriented and aligned to the aim for which you have joined LP. I can really assure you that you will have very exciting, very enthralling times at LP. Because all what we are going to do along with you, the word is along with you, is supplementing bit by bit, complementing bit by bit to the aim, to the goal which you are in for at LPU. And thus, we profess and we focus on the outcome of the program more than the output of the program. I once again welcome you to this wonderful, enriching arena of learning. And once again, appreciate and extend my gratitude to your parents that they have chosen 
help you for your next milestone. I welcome you all. Thank you so much, sir. Your every single word is so inspiring. Now, I will be asking the techno queries asked by the students when they have filled the registration form, sir. Okay. So, we have a first query from Daksh Gupta, who is seeking the guidance on a roadmap for the first year of study, sir. Okay. First year of studies in higher education are very critical because you intend to forget your basics. If I, if I show you a quadratic equation with a non-zero on the right-hand side, you'll not be able to figure out. So first year of studies is not just simply mere repetition of the concepts which you have already studied in your school days. It is an extended experiential learning. Try to experience each and every bit of your learning which you did in schooling. Try to bring that flavor of adding experience and adding implicability of the basics which you have studied. In the very first year itself, try to focus on participating and excelling in the communication skills. Because once you have, you have ordered your communication skills, you are expressible, you can explain things wonderfully well. All what you are going to study all across would come in as a fly away for you in your career. Right, sir. Sir, the next question is from Shikhar and Ayush. And a lot of other students have asked like how to start their coding journey and how to become top 1% coder. Okay. See, the very first thing about coding is you should be logic smart, not the syntax smart. Because syntaxes would come and go. When I started my coding way back 30 years, it was DBase, it was COBOL, it was Fortran. It was, then, then the transition happened. Then the transition happened uh, from BASIC uh, to COBOL to DBase to Fortran to whatnot. And now I'm, I'm coding, I'm specifically coding in Python Julia. So my basic understanding and my basic learning is that to begin the coding journey, you should first draw the pseudo code of it. You should first understand the logic, the logic which is utilizing the least amount of resources and then look to the syntax. Be it Java, be it Python, be it C, C++, C Sharp, whatsoever it is. But if you have understood, if you can draw, if you can delineate the logic well, syntax is all across the same. So your coding journey should become or should begin with logic building aptitude. Shubhita. Yes. So now this next question is related to the coding also. Like Atharv is asking like computer programming or computer engineering primarily revolves around the coding? No, computer engineering never revolved around coding. Coding is one of the component because see, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it in a different way. In early, maybe around 50s, the mode of communication or the mode of expression was language. In early 70s and 80s, one more mode of communication was added. Expression was added and that was mathematics. Because a lot of mathematical, analytical, logical and aptitude oriented interactions started happening. Now, coding is one form of expression. So it just simply is a one part of your computer science studies. Any other things which are there. Nowadays, again, I'll, I'll speak the same metaphor. 
logic smart would win the race more than the syntax smart. There are a lot many other features, computer architecture, how the data is to be aggregated and how it is to be retrieved by using data structures. There are a lot many courses which you need to undergo for networks because you know how how my voice, my audio, my video is coming to you is again a component of computer science. All what we are interacting, all what you're seeing, experiencing is computer science. It's not just simply coding. Again, I'll go back to my example of mobile phone. Coding is one of the component, but then it has lot many other features also. The code is letting you search one of your contacts, but then storage of that contact, how it is put into a particular data structure, which is stored at a particular location also counts. No? Coding, of course, it is a part of computer science, but not at it. it is the whole and soul of computer science. Should be tough. Right. So next, Ansh is asking, like, what is the basic difference between synchronous, synchronous and asynchronous programming? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. If you have understood these two words, uh, then then it's something brilliant. I I appreciate Ansh. So I'll give you an example. Synchronous programming is something which you do step by step, one block after the other. And asynchronous programming is parallelly multiple blocks are being executed. The perfect example is if you are only doing toothbrushing, then you have a set procedure of doing the toothbrushing, rinsing your mouth, taking out the toothbrush, taking out the toothpaste, creating a nurdle. They are all blocks, but they are arranged in a linear form. One block after the other is executed for your toothbrushing. But then if you are brushing and toasting a bread together, then two modules are running together so that the time is saved, but the activities are over within the short duration of time. The basic difference between synchronous and asynchronous is synchronous is blocking. One block after the other as you do brush. Asynchronous is if you are if you are doing brushing and making tea for you. So there are two blocks uh, working together. One is the brushing and the other is making. They both can be in the synchronous block mode but they are working in a synchronous mode. Shubhita. Right, so we have a next question, which like most of the students have asked, like how to master data structures and algorithms? Uh, look around you. Uh, you work a lot with data structures, actually. All, all, all your data is stored in a data structure. Look around you and create similes. If there is a data structure in form of queues, in form of stacks, or in form of any of the form of data structures, you have an example because you are one of the greatest storage devices. If you are, if you are storing the reels which you are seeing one after the other, then that is one form of data structure. And if you are storing your clothes in a rack, one after the other on top of it. That is another form of it. If you really want to master data structures, you need to correlate a data structure with the way you store the information in your mind or you store the objects around you. Because data structures are nothing but storage mechanisms by which the storage can be done efficiently and retrieval can be done effectively. So look around you and you can master data structures like any. Shubhita. Yes, sir. So we have a next question from Aditya. He's interested to know about data sciences and the AI opportunities. Lot of opportunities, lot of opportunities. I, I always tell my students, 
see if you do like this if you basically you know if you do like this there's no air inside it you've got data and this is the form of data i say that data availability is more than the oxygen availability in the world because right now also we are curating data by each word spoken is now being transcribed into form of text which would become data so data science is the way that how do you infer infer the meaning out of that data if you have a data of this particular uh, dialogue of ours in textual form you can very well identify that how many times i have used a particular word what kind of habitual word pronunciation recitation i have so you can you can take this inference to an ai model and predict my psychology and my personality so this is how this is how the entire gamut this is how the entire thing works lot of opportunities with the advent of generative ai coming into picture now people are talking about large not large language models people are talking about large vision models people are talking about things which are beyond our com comprehension lot of opportunities will be there shubhita yes so we have other questions from data sciences again like ajay is asking how data science can enhance decision making process in business data science enhances decision making everywhere yeah how do you take decision is based on the data science only right now if you are sitting in this seminar it is by virtue of the data science that you have taken the decision i'll give you an example you decided to join lpu in computer science lot of data lot of parameters you might have actually looked upon along with your parents and then you have decided na so that exactly is replicated anywhere and everywhere in business it is playing a vital role you can predict that what would be the customer base in coming one day in coming one week in coming one year and based on those predictions you can control your production the predictability of even small little things like you know currency conversions changes the entire spectrum and scenario of business a lot of lot of decision making lot of uh, you know lot of insights generation predictions and prognosis happens with data shubhita so students also wants to know like aditya wants to know ai will replace humans in web development or like what is the future after 5 years in software industries ai can never replace humans because it will always be artificial and human intelligence you cannot cope up the human intelligence processing speed and sense of fusion when i say this thing There'll, there'll be no algorithm. There'll be no model which can fuse multiple senses together. I'll give you a better example than this. No AI model would be equating the scenario which I'm going to talk about. In the morning, you sip a cup of tea, na? You bring the cup closer to your mouth, and then you take decision that whether to blow. Uh, to warm it or reduce the temperature or to sip it see how in nanoseconds you take that decision and it's completely a sense of fusion your eyes are looking to that tea your nose is smelling the temperature eyes are not looking to the color of the tea it is actually looking to the temperature gradient of the tea your nose all your skin around your lips are sensing and all of them are fusing together to let you take a decision whether to sip the tea or to blow artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning or even generative ai would always 
stand behind a human. It is up to the human that whether you want the AI model to take you over or you want to be the, the driver in the seat. It completely depends on you. Shubhit. Yes. So we have a next question from Kumal. Like what they should pick? Core CAC or specialization in AI and ML? Uh, it depends on individuals' aspirations, perceptions, and perspective. If you really want to, in your in your undergraduate level, if you really want to have the spread, see, I'll I'll talk about I shaped professionals and T shaped professionals. When you see an I, it is a straight professional, meaning thereby conceptually that professional is clear in all the aspects of that discipline. If you want to become that I-shaped professional, course CSE would be the choice. But if you want to become a T-shaped professional, wherein you have an understanding of the basic concepts, procedures, practices, ideologies of that discipline, and if you want to scale up or if you want to spread out into a specialization, then AIML specialization would be the course for your choice. So again, we have a question of data science. So like Jaskirat is curious about how the BCA data science with IBM program enhances skills in data science techniques and tools. See, all these, all these programs in which we have the tie-ups, the tie-up is not just simply at the level of content development and content creation. The tie-up is in terms of that the professionals are going to be there with you and deliver a set of courses. So if an individual who's sitting at IP, IBM and for past five years, 10 years down the line, he's doing uh, real good data analytics, real meaningful data analytics on the real-time data sets, he'll be able to correlate the concepts with what is happening in real life world. So a program with an industry association clearly lays down the academics being co-delivered. When I say co-delivered, some of the courses would be, would be delivered by your faculty at LPU and many of the courses would be delivered by experts from IBM. So you have a better perception, perspective, your horizon gets wider because you are more in, with an individual who has done it on his own. Shubita. Very good. Sir. So now we have a next question asked by the query that what is the effect of integrating machine learning with aerospace engineering? Oh, there's, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, integration which has already happened. If you if you know about uh, avionics, if you know about uh, aerospace a little bit, all the aircrafts in the world they fly completely on a machine learning model. The moment an aircraft reaches hundred feet above the ground, the entire control of that aircraft is taken up by the model. And the pilot is just simply looking to the data around him in form forms of meters and in form of you know all the indicators and all. This is one part of it. I'll give you an example where where machine learning uh, helps in avionics, aerospace. That if two aircrafts are actually traveling, there's no human intervention required that they do not collide. This is known as anti-collision mechanism. They'll not collide because the moment they reach around two kilometers closer, the system, the model, turns one to the left, turns another to the right. So there is, there is no collision which is happening. If you talk about aerospace, even the lift, even drag, even the propulsion of a rocket is controlled, governed, and monitored by AIML models only. Human interventions are not there. Shubita. 
Right, sir. So we have a question from Anmol. I guess all the fresher students are having this question. What is the career prospects in terms of computer science and engineering? There are a lot of career prospects. Basically, you can start with the software development because there are there are various aspects of it. One is the software development. The other can be software testing. The third can be uh, database administrator. The fourth can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, designing the data science scripts for decision making. The next can be model curators, model uh, even model maintenance is one of the key aspects which you can step into. With the advent of generative AI, you can go in for, uh, you know, core model generations, transformer generations. You can you can work on attention maps. But the basic, basic trades would lie in software, DevOps. Uh, now people are talking about MLOps also. As DevOps are there, people are talking about ML ops also. Uh, you, you can look into nowadays technologies like Kubernetes and uh, Dockers and containers have come into picture, which gives you loads of opportunity to explore these areas and start working in these areas. Right. So uh, we have a specific question like uh, Shilesh is very curious to know about what is the placement perspective in term of aerospace and engineering? There are a lot of placement perspective uh, and a uh, lot of placement opportunities. Our children are doing so wonderfully of aerospace that they are getting absorbed by the aerospace startup. You know, for aerospace students, the golden or rather I'll call it as platinum era has just begun. Because as US or as NASA opened the doors of private players in space exploration, Tesla came into picture. Blue Origin came into picture. Lot many other players came into picture. Similarly, now ISRO and government of India under the ages of Honorable Prime Minister has opened the doors of private players in space exploration. And lot of startups are now coming. You can find your dream out there in those startups. But our students, they do a lot of good inter internships and even conversions in government sector as well. HAL or maybe uh, DRD, uh, ISRO or things like that. Opportunities are on team in both private sector or government sector or semi-government sector. The only thing is, your readiness counts more than need. Should be done. So, a lot of students wants to know, like how to get ready for the placements, and how university is going to help them to get ready for the placements. All right, for the placements, there are three key mantras. One is you should be, you should be very well prepared in the basics also. When I say basics also, you might know rocket science, but if you are missing on basics, that is going to be one of the biggest uh, backdrops. The second is you should be able to communicate what you know. Because you might have done a grand, great project during your BTEC. But if you are unable to explain that project, that too in a very short duration of time, because nobody is going to listen to you for maybe 30 minutes or maybe 10 minutes. You'll have to explain it all in just two to three minutes. And third most important thing is your attitude. Your attitude lays the foundation of your altitude. When I say this, all these basic Three things are very, very important. Concept, including basics, communication, and covenants. These three things are very important. And we, from the very first day of yours, ensure that there is a concept which you are coming up uh, with, uh, uh, with this term only, and it is known as back to basics, in which you'll be given 
in a in your mobile app in your lp touch you will be given a topic two days prior that you need to speak about this topic in your class and this class you are going to speak prepare that topic start speaking by the time the company is going to come you might have spoken on more than 100 topics so communication and the very basics another initiative which you are going to actually enjoy is tend to thrive in which you are going to be going to be one of the individuals talking about the generic form of it general uh, queries and dialogues the current affairs dialogues and your domain oriented dialogues the moment you transit from one stage to another stage the dialogue would become cumbersome so your basics are revised your communication is very well taken care of your domain knowledge is retained and more so ever will give you lot of inputs on your categorization just after first year you will be categorized into a flag of red green and orange now this flag will also give you recommendations that you need to improve on this this and this you need to improve on your basics you need to improve your, on your domain you need to improve upon your soft skills you need to improve upon so so many things and for you and for us the dashboard would be available we together are now going to work on betterment of your proficiencies in all multiple aspects so that there is there is no there is no iota of doubt that you will not be ready for your career sir we have a next question from himanshu and nusrat they want to know that how lpu integrates the latest technologies in their curriculum uh each and every curriculum is enriched uh and enriched through what through employers feedback meaning that by each and every company coming to uh hire your seniors we take a lot of feedbacks from them the alumni feedback is very important for us because he has studied a set of courses and then he has gone to the the battlefield meaning thereby he has gone and joined a job his feedback is taken that in this particular course if this kind of technology if this kind of input or if this kind of rebrushing happens it will be better for me because uh, then i'll be i'll be more uh, more ready for my career parents feedback all the stakeholders feedback is one form by which we include all the enrichments and technologies and whatsoever is happening around the world every year we do rigorous curriculum development and review we focus quite a lot on a concept called pathways every year we revise our pathways pathways are the the ways or pathways are the baskets in which you put your aspirations meaning thereby the pathways are government jobs corporate jobs higher study study abroad entrepreneurship and research these are six pathways for each pathway we do loads of research all year long that for this particular pathway be it a product pathway uh, for computer science and uh, the pro the corporate pathway with the product company like google fang and all facebook amazon google and netflix kind of thing uh, we browse the entire globe and look out for what kind of profiles are given you will not be given vice president on the very first day so they give profiles to the seniors we call them as cohorts so for a particular pathway there is a cohort specifically identified and for that cohort we have identified the skills see how nano and how meticulously we work that we let you choose a pathway we'll also let you choose a cohort 
and then on the basis of that particular pathway and, and a cohort under that pathway, we'll give you set of courses or all your courses which you're going to study would have some star courses. Now, these star courses would have the capacity and capability through pedagogy and evaluation to instill the skill or skills which are needed for that cohort under a particular pathway. When I talk about this in most of the forums, they say that, yes, this is the only way by which uh, you, you can prepare students. So don't bother about it. Uh, leave it to us, your foster parents, leave it to us. We'll, we'll take care of that. The only thing is you'll have to put in your truthful efforts. Should it be. Right. So we have a next question from Yuvraj. Who is seeking an advice from you? Like what is the best path for web development? The best path for web development would be understand the databases because they are at the back end. Understand the databases fairly very well because you're into uh, uh, web development. So you need to have a clearer, fairer idea about uh, networks, cloud technology, because that is where your data is going to stay. You need to have idea of various frameworks, be it Java, be it .NET. Uh, and then you need to integrate the front end. For web development, one of the very important component is your creativity. Because your work is being displayed all across. And you millennials or Gen Z know it very well that if something is attractive, something is engaging, then only people stick to it. So creativity, front end in terms of all the frameworks, be it .NET, Neem, Merm, Stacks, whatsoever development you have, you need to have one more understanding of responsive web development, meaning thereby that whatsoever you have designed, it identifies the display by its own, that whether it is going to be displayed on a laptop or on a mobile and adjust accordingly. You need to be very clear about wireframings, which you do in uh, in platforms on platforms like Figma and all. And then you need to have a very crisp, clear picture of cloud technology, databases, data augmentation, data retrieval, because the data retrieval rate is the key. And for all this data, what I'm talking about, you need to be very clear about data structures. Should it? Right, sir. So uh, we have a next question from Arjun. He wants to know like which thing to be choose, Java developer or a .NET developer? See, uh, you, you cannot clearly demark, demark these technologies because these are very well practiced and endeavored technologies. I will again repeat what I say. You to be logic smart, not the syntax smart. If you're logic smart, then be it Java, be it .NET, or be it any, any other framework like DevOps or Mean, Mern, or Kubernetes coming your way, or containers or Dockers coming your way. If you're logic smart, both the streams are equally good. Or rather, almost all the stream of development is equally good. Should be. Okay. So next question is from Kasutaba. She wants to know like, what is the career opportunity specifically for biotechnology? Biotechnology, uh, you might have heard that I did my PhD in bioinformatics, but prior to that, I did my CS uh, master's and then did my mechanical uh, as, as bachelor's. Why I shifted? Why I shifted? Because the entire world's research is going to shift to biology. Rather, specifically speaking to humans. Because right now what is happening is that if I go in for a drug design, I create a generalizable drug design, meaning thereby that if I have a headache, I'll try to, try to take a painkiller, which is a generalizable drug. Do you think that uh, we, we both are similar? Or anybody like me and Dr. Shubita or me and Mr. Chandan or 
every one of us is absolutely unique in terms of our DNA makeup. So there has to be a drug designed specifically for my headache. And that is where the biotechnology is going to play a vital and a critical role. The process engineering which you know, the, the proteomics which you understand, the genetic engineering which you understand, along with the idea, the basic nuances of computer science, if you blend them together, sky is the limit. Now, people are talking about space exploration. If you have chosen biotechnology, your entire biology shifts when you, when you move from here to space. You have to design a lot many newer things. I'll give you an example. When I first saw the iPhone way back, uh, maybe in, in 2008, 9, I asked an individual who gave me that iPhone, I said, where I'm going to dial the number. Why I'm giving this example? Because some biotechnologists, some individual who understands biology has given you that touch screen. It is not only computer science or electronics people can give you that regenerative uh, reflective transducer. It is only a biotechnologist who can give. Your mouse, which you use now, your touch pads, is the brainchild of an individual who's wonderfully well at biotechnology or biology. A lot of opportunities are waiting for you. Lot and lot of opportunities. Very well explained, sir. So we have a next question from Pransoon. He wants to learn, know like why we have a different chipsets for mobiles, for laptops. See, there, there's a concept, uh, concept known as a uh, system on chips. Now that system on chips makes, see, if, if, I, if, I, if I make a product which can do all things together, then what is going to happen is that I'm going to use that product. For, if it can do 100 things, I can use that product for what? For just two, three things only. And for 97 things, it is idle. So it is ill-utilization of resources. Similarly, when it comes to chips, there are certain chips which are meant to do more rigorous kind of computation. People are talking about transition of CPU, that is central processing unit, to graphical processing unit. And now people are talking about TPUs, tensor processing units. Now these are what? are uh, generalizable chips which can handle all kind of computation, starting from your gaming to matrix solutions to um, vector uh, calculus to anything. But do you think that a chipset sitting in a mobile is expected to solve a third degree differential equation for you? If that chipset has that ability, then only 0.01% would use it for 0.0001% times. So that will be completely ill-utilization, under-utilization of the resource. So all the chips for all the devices, there are chips sitting inside your wrist watches also, smart watches also. Do you think that that, uh, that uh, wrist, uh, wrist watch chip uh, would solve a vector calculus problem for you? It should not, because if you want to, uh, if if you want to do uh, rigorous, comprehensive gaming, then that chip should not support it. No, that uh, gaming would go to what your PlayStation. That is why. That is why, based on the requirement, based on the resources which it is designed to cater to shifts vary. Very well explained, sir. So we have a question from Tejas. He seeks a guidance, like how to start a project using Arduino to simplify the household task. 
Oh, that's that's a brilliant question. See, Arduino or Raspberry Pi or maybe uh, ESP32 or whatsoever in Node.js, they are, they are basically, you know, they're platforms for prototyping only. Mind my words, they are meant for prototyping only. When I say prototyping, it is to validate, validate the idea in your mind. It goes to that level only. If you have an Arduino available with you, know that how many analog inputs it can take, how many digital inputs it can take. And based on the inputs, if it is a digital input on sound, and if you want to create an analog input uh, of, of, you know, buzzing or uh, uh, an input, an output of glowing uh, LED based on the uh, decibels of the sound, then you can very well do so. In household devices, security can be can be one of the features which you can you can implement as a prototype, not as a product, because that will just be validating your idea. For other things, you'll have to design circuits for that, because you need to miniaturize, and you need to work on the power factor of that device, which which you are actually going to use as a product. Arduino, Raspberry Pi. And all these all these platforms they provide a very good means to create prototypes, and you can do a lot of things. You can uh, use the Wi-Fi module uh, and switch on switch off the lights by voice control. You can implement security systems that if any anybody opens the door, the outside door, it gives a buzzer. It can even give an alert on your mobile phones. So, lot many things uh, are there. Once you are once you are here in LPU, uh, possibly you belong to electronics. Uh, the individual who has asked this question, you'll have an experiential learning course in the very first semester. Now that course will teach you how to use Arduino, and then you can build whatsoever application you want to build. That's it. Thanks. Right. So we have a last question from Thomas. He is interested to understand the relationship between LPU and industries in terms of research and the sponsorships provided by the university. A lot of, lot of uh, interaction is happening. Uh, we call it as tripatriate uh, interaction with the industry. We have gone beyond industry interaction over a coffee table or maybe uh, with an with a evening snack or on dinners. We have very clearly laid down that what industry is going to do, how we are going to embrace the expectations from the industry. It is not just simply in the curriculum design. They are participating in the evaluation mechanism also. Because if a mechanism for evaluation, evaluation designed by an industry, that will give you a clear-cut picture of the understanding of that particular concept. Because he might have implemented that concept in real time. A lot of research is happening. We are doing we are doing a lot of consultancy around food technology, around AI and ML, uh, around a lot of local industry is coming to NPU. They are actually asking uh, uh, research collaborations because uh, with the advent of generative AI and now our thrust area becoming generative AI and uh, gen AI kind of formats, a uh, lot of industry are coming to us for automating their regular routinery tasks using generative AI. That's one aspect of it. A lot of water pollution, a biotechnology school is looking after a lot of uh, pollution uh, oriented uh, handshaking, research handshaking with the, with the industry. The pharmacy school is handshaking for drug delivery mechanisms. There are a lot many things which are happening with the industry. And all those values of research consultancy would come back to your classes. Because if I, as a faculty, have done a consultancy with an industry, I'll surely bring all that knowledge to my students back inside the class. Shubhita. All the queries are well answered, sir. Now, with your permissions, uh, can we close that? Okay.
So we are deeply grateful for your insightful words of wisdom and invaluable guidance that you have shared with us today, sir. Your contribution have undoubtedly inspired all the students to pursue their career with more confidence and more determination. I extend my heartfelt thanks for your time, knowledge, and support, sir. Thank you once again. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shubhita and my colleagues here for giving me the, the opportunity so that, you know, I can understand uh, what the uh, Gen Z is thinking and uh, how to handhold Gen Z because these kind of interactions only, uh, they pave new dimensions of understanding. Uh, before I conclude, I once again welcome you to LPU as a, as a virtu, as a student of uh, the most enthralling, the most exciting uh, academic frameworks of the country. And I also thank uh, your parents that they have shown uh, their, their, uh, you know, their confidence that yes, uh, my ward would uh, aspire to take up his dream career with LP. I assure you that uh, we'll live up to the expectations with this, once again, I welcome you all on board LP. Thank you and good night, everybody. Thank you once again, sir, for your time, knowledge, and support, sir. Thank you.